Hi, this is Matt Bernstein with Skillhands.com. Welcome to the show. This is where we help hardworking people such as yourself to start a successful side business. New episodes come out every single Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Enjoy the show. What is a brand and why does it matter? When you look at any big company, the brand is probably the first thing that you come to mind. In fact, there are very few successful businesses that don't have a prominent brand. And it's hard to imagine how a company can get so big without investing in its image and creating an identity for itself. Despite this, many small businesses and internet businesses don't take the necessary time to create a strong brand and strong identity that they can use to drive their organization forward. Oftentimes it comes down to a lack of understanding. Not only do many businesses and entrepreneurs not understand how branding works, many also don't understand how important branding is. Companies with no identity. It's not hard to find companies that lack brands when you look online or haven't invested the right time or effort into their branding. Now think of companies that have become international household names. These companies have exciting names like Apple, Adidas, Coca-Cola, Nike, Microsoft, Disney, Nintendo, Red Bull, Starbucks, and more. They all have interesting, unique logos. Many of these logos have gone on to become almost cultural symbols and are now embezzled on t-shirts and scrawled onto homework diaries around the world. The websites are in keeping up with this, so their adverts and even the products conform to an identity. People look for these brands now as a sign of quality and because they are what they've known to expect. Some people even consider themselves as fans of these brands and get behind them 100%. People don't feel the same way about companies like Johnson Smith & Co. Brands make you recognizable. They make it far easy to monetize and they give your business a cohesive vision that will drive you down the road forward and that will win you fans. We're going to learn about choosing your mission statement and name. This is the single most important part of your branding and once you've worked this out, everything else should follow out from there. So let's get started with your mission statement. Creating one. A mission statement is simply a short sentence or two that clearly defines what you do and why you do it. Perhaps the best way to illustrate this is to look at some of the most famous examples. Coca-Cola. Our mission is to refresh the world in mind, body, and spirits, to inspire moments of optimism and happiness through our brand and action. Starbucks, to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. Amazon, it's our goal to be the Earth's most customer-centric company where customers can find and discover anything online. Google, Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. What do these statements all have in common? All of them are rather grand and all of them are rather vague and all of them are inspiring. They tend to focus on the why and then the how instead of the what. So let's look. You have a company that makes socks. Sure, you can call yourselves Socks Limited and can be done with it. But you want to create something a bit more inspiring and you would begin with your mission statement. Your mission is not to make socks. Your mission is to warm people's feet. And in doing so, maybe it's to help them feel cozy and happy in their own bodies. So maybe you change your company name to Warm Socks. And your mission statement would be as follows. To warm people's feet and help them feel comfortable in their bodies throughout the day. Now you have a real promise that people can get behind. And you have something much more exciting. And you have something far more marketable. This can motivate your staff and it can help you envision ideas for future products and marketing campaigns. So spend some time reflecting on your own brand and your own business. What it is that drew you into the industry in the first place? What is it that you find so exciting about it? And how can you inspire others to feel the same way that you do? Use this to create one or two sentence mission statement. And from there, you'll be able to start coming up with other aspects of your brand. Choosing your company name. Now that you have your mission statement, you can start thinking about your company name. This should be something that describes what your business does, but also evokes something more interesting and exciting. It's a good idea to come up with a few names and try surveying your friends and relatives to see which they think is best. Remember your name, your business, for your customers, not for yourself. 
Also important is to make sure your business name isn't trademarked, which you can see at the US Patent and Trademark Office. You might also want to apply for a trademark yourself in the future, which ensures that no one can use your company name. You can also trademark your logo. Another good tip is to check for whether your domain name is available for your chosen business name and think a little bit about things like SEO. How easy would it be for somebody to search and find your business online? Calling yourself Pear wouldn't work nowadays. Pear.com would be taken and you'd have an incredibly hard time showing up in searches. Fortunately, you need to have a little practicality for your business name as well as thinking about what evokes the best feelings. Now it's time for the fun stuff, creating a logo and finding other materials. The purpose of your logo is basically to give your business a visual identity. If you choose your logo, well then it should be instantly identifiable and people should know and associate anything with that image with your brand and your business. Once again, you need to be a bit creative and somewhat pragmatic with your logo creation. How to create your logo. Consider the following criteria for your logo creation. Your logo should be recognizable, simple, versatile, iconic, relevant, and original. So straight away, you want to avoid anything that is going to be cliched or derivative. Forget anything that includes a globe or a light bulb or a tick. They've all been done to death. Simple is better because you want to come up with something that can be copied. Remember what we said about kids drawing Nike ticks into their homework diaries? They also want to make your logo more versatile, which means you'll be able to use it in more places. Think about it this way. Your logo isn't just going to be used on your website or on your products. Sometimes it's going to be need to be on a banner or someone else's website. Sometimes it might be on packaging. So ask yourself, does the logo look just as good when it's used as a silhouette? much smaller in black and white. Finally, make sure your logo expresses everything you want to say about your business. That means not only communicating the niche, the industry, and the kinds of products and services you'll be selling, but also the mission statement and the emotion that which you'll need to come up with your mission statement before you come up with your logo. When you create a logo, it's very important not to create a JPEG. These are what are known as raster files, and the result will be something look like grainy when zoomed in, and it's very difficult to edit. Instead, you need to create a vector file, such as an AI file, which will ensure that your image never loses definition and it is highly versatile and customizable. If you choose to outsource this process, you can try a website like Fiverr, which would probably be garbage, Upwork, Elance, or a forum like Warrior Forum. Perhaps a similar or more efficient method would be to crowdsource your design on 99designs. This way you can invite as many people designers that are interested to submit ideas for your design. And you can just select one that you're happy with and pay for that one. Other materials, the visual elements of your brand don't stop you at logos. Once you have your logo, you should have a color scheme. They should have a feel of what things are going to look like. You need to make sure that this is consistent and cohesive across everything that you do. That will start with your website, which will subtly borrow colors and elements from your logo. For instance, you might want to use a multi-color picker tool in your image editor and get the precise color code of your logo. You can then utilize this throughout the color palette on your website. Even if this isn't a base color, it might serve as an accent color. Take a look at the websites for Virgin Media or Virgin Active and you'll see lots of red. You might also want to create your own font or typeface or choose one from a site like Font Squirrel. You can then use it throughout all of your materials and creations. You can take it even a bit further if you want and create your own design language that will ensure everything is consistent. Google does this with their own material design concept which ensures that all software and apps have a consistent look and feel. Apple has a little less explicit design language, but if you like the look of their products, you'll likely find that they have a similar feel that uses a lot of white and lots of clean lines and curved edges. The Apple headphones somewhat exemplify these principles. At the very least, you need some more materials and images for your marketing efforts. This will include things like wallpapers, images that you can use on Facebook, a video opener, possibly a jingle. Depending on the nature of your business, you might even want to create your own mascot. Mascots are a good choice for commercial businesses and can help you make a product seem friendlier, warmer, more familiar. Animals are a particularly good choice.
and something along the lines that would be brilliant fit for our warm sock business. Why do you need to go through the trouble of creating or acquiring all these different elements for your brand? Because now you're going to try and make sure that your brand is everywhere. And you're going to try to take every single opportunity to increase your brand awareness and brand recognition. A large part of what this will take place is on social media, where for instance, you will need to have a similar look and feel on every single site. This is important because it ensures a seamless and consistent experience for your customers and it looks much more professional and impressive. Your website is going to be the main place where you show off your brand. When someone visits your Facebook page or Twitter page, you need to make sure that they're greeted with the exact same logo, the same username, the same cover cover image, and the same type of content. All of this will further reinforce their impressions of your brand and will make them much more impressed and more likely to click like. We will, however, touch briefly on how you're going to enhance your brand through a few marketing strategies. To begin with, you're going to create all the social media sites and ensure that you have a prominent branding on each one of them. At the same time, you need to ensure that your social media pages are providing value that's relevant to your industry. This will affect your business and it will encourage more people to follow and share your content. Think about your vague proposition and your mission statement and try to evoke this throughout your social media. Show images and posts that will inspire to move people to get them really behind your brand. In the case of warm socks, you might use Instagram to show pictures of people cuddled up by the fire or reading a great book in this evening. This way, you're using social media to promote the lifestyle that you're selling. And why not show a little bit of behind the scenes stuff too? This works particularly well if you have a personal brand, meaning that you use your own name and likeness. But even for startups, this is a good way to show the energy and enthusiasm behind what you do. Another important tool for marketing will be creating a mailing list and a blog. These will both allow you to use content marketing, which is what will bring people to your site and get people to read your content regularly. Here you need to think about what will bring people to your businesses in searches, but also how you can further sell people on your vision and get people behind what you do. Video also creates a lot of great opportunities, and especially if you choose to create a campaign or an event that will translate well into this medium. And why not use sites like Spreadshirt to print out some branded corporate gifts? Your branding really isn't about what you say, it's about what you do. As we mentioned earlier, a brand is also a stamp of quality in the idea scenario and want people to seek out your business because they feel everything that you do is better quality than the competition. When I'm out in a new town, I look for a Starbucks because I know that they make good coffee and have Wi-Fi to power sockets for my laptop. Back in the day, Nintendo had a seal of quality on certain games which told consumers that the game that they were buying had Nintendo's approval. This means that you need to take your reputation and your brand very seriously. Anything has your name and logo on it deserves to be the very best of your work and your attention should be something that you're proud to produce and sell. Once you've created a brand, it becomes incredibly important not to drop the ball. In fact, if you aim to do the opposite and create fantastic experience for your customers, they'll remember that. One one way you can do this is by under-promising and over-delivering. What this means that is instead of claiming that your product is the best in the world and boasting about all the freebies you're going to include, you instead hold something back. For instance, if you buy a phone case on Amazon, then often times vendors would include a free stylus. This is over delivering and the hope that you'll be so pleased that you got a freebie you want to shop there again. Another simple example is to say that your delivery takes three to four days when in reality it takes two to three days. This is something that customers will be incredibly pleased to get their item early. The importance of packaging and delivery. This is an example of delivery, but really in the term of delivery can be much broader. Delivery can also be the way that you deliver a service. That means paying attention to the small details like your friendliness in emails and the way that you present yourself with what you wear. The same goes for packaging. This could mean gift wrapping well so that it arrives in one piece through the mail and can also mean packaging and experience in terms of the environment and the way that is presented. Make sure you pay attention to the little details and don't just think about the end result. Think about the experience and how it's going to get there, how this will make your customer feel. Your reputation management basics. If all if you get all of this right, then you should develop a reputation for your business so that whenever someone sees your logo, they'll be moved to place an order. Of course, this doesn't always go 
to plan though, and sometimes you'll find that your customer will make your life difficult, or that if you have a bad day and drop the ball. When this happens, you can find yourself curing bad reviews and developing a bad reputation. This is the downside of a brand and pretty much the opposite of what you're aiming for. When this happens, it's a technique called reputation management to try and fix your reputation and get things back on track. What this means, it's something that you can do in person through interviews and statements, but these days it often refers to a form of SEO, search engine optimization. The simple question is, when someone searches for your brand, what will they find? Is it good? Here are the three outcomes here. Your business doesn't show up at all, bad. Your business shows up, but mainly with bad reviews, worse. Your business shows up and looks great. SEO is a technique that involves getting any given website or website to the top of the search rankings. This means that when someone looks for your brand, you can define what comes up first. Of course, the ideal scenario here is that it's your website that comes up first. This way you can completely control the first impression that people get about your business and determine exactly what they first will read about you. You'll do this with filling your site with lots of relevant content, by finding keywords and inserting them into your content by building lots of links. You should also be certain to list your businesses with the online directory such as Google, My Business, and Foursquare. At the same time though, you want to ensure with positive reviews show above the negative ones. To do this, you might want to perform some SEO for the positive reviews, but at the same time, you need to try and ensure that you have more positive reviews than negatives. How do you do that? There are some number of strategies. One is which to provide the best service or business possible so that the experience people have with your business will be positive. On top of that, it's also a good idea to request that they leave a positive review. Simply ask, if you've enjoyed our service, please leave a review on TripAdvisor. It's a great way to nudge someone to write about you how they otherwise wouldn't. And this is particularly important when you consider that people are generally much more likely to write about negative experiences more than positive ones when left to their own devices. Another important tip is to respond to reviews on these sites. Most sites give the option for you to do this and that way you apologize for their experience or perhaps offer compensation Say how you improve it in the future. Don't be defensive or protective. Just apologize and show that you've listened. This can be undermined the damaging effect of a bad review. If you're really lucky, the reviewer might even change their score. How to handle a rebranding. If things get really bad, then you might want to decide to rebrand. This should be considered as a last resort and can be render a lot of work you've just put in and so far pointless. However, if you want to protect your business from a bad reputation, or if all of your audience or industry is changing, then it could be a good decision. A rebrand can also be useful for a brand that has become muddled or lost in its way. When rebranding, you need to maintain a connection to your old brand and try to avoid the idea that you have a bad reputation. Instead, focus on the change and how you're changing yourself and your business in terms of your mission statement, your products or services. Create a narrative that your business is changing and so is your name and demonstrate how you're going to be bigger, better, more efficient than ever before. Always think about your customer and what it means for them. Don't rebrand to try to be cool or to shrug off bad press. Those might be motivations too, but keep the focus on your value proposition and what you're going to do differently and better. A recent example of this was a rebrand of Odesk, which became Upwork. Odesk was a freelancer site that had developed something of a reputation for the lowest price rules mentality and didn't really benefit the freelancers or clients. The name change was designed to help the community move away from this idea and thus the new name and new logo came to push a, encourage a higher quality of workers to charge for their premium services. Another aspect of branding to consider is when a company chooses to use multiple brands and you might as well decide you need more than one brand if you have lots of very separate services. So if you have products that you want to give their own branding, a good example is Microsoft. That is a company brand and also has many brands of its products and divisions, Windows and Xbox. For example, they have much more. Not only does this make it easier to promote those different aspects of their business, but it also means that one part of their company has entirely different mission status and reputation than the other. 
This becomes obvious when you compare the purpose and reputation of Windows with that of Xbox. At one point, Windows and Microsoft had reputations for being somewhat old hat and out of touch, and yet Xbox brand remained very strong, particularly in the youth markets. Consider making brands for your divisions and products if you want to branch out into doing lots of areas or if you want to create a whole movement behind what you're doing. On LinkedIn, there's even an option to create both a company page and showcase page. The showcase page is where you would put smaller brands and this way you can promote your websites entirely separately to your main business. Fantastic examples of branding that you can learn from. Amazon. They do an awfully lot right that does not only Amazon have a great logo that cleverly evokes and the image of a smile and of delivery, but it also knows how to feature that logo prominently on its excellent packaging. Many of us have a phenomenal reaction to seeing an Amazon package land on our doorstep. Amazon also knows how to keep things fresh and exciting. They have pushed the boundaries in their industry with Kindle, and now they're taking it even bigger leaps with their own drone service. Coca-Cola. While Coca-Cola is just a soft drink, on the face of it, its marketing campaign elevates it far beyond that. Coca-Cola is very prominent on near about every form of social media and is constantly running fantastic campaigns. Their greatest feat, changing the color scheme of Santa's outfit across the world. Red Bull. It isn't just a drink, it's an energy drink. This concept that the company is taking to heart with advertising campaign that includes sponsorship for extreme sports and athletes, as well as social media filled with some truly awesome stunts and feats. Starbucks. It has some branding slip ups, but in general it manages to maintain a good reputation for its sustainable coffee. This has a strong recognizable logo and does several things to improve the experience from the customers, from letting them pre-order via the app to calling customers by name when their coffee is ready. Honorable mentions go to Apple, Google, Pixar, Facebook, Pepsi, Nike, and Adidas. Take a look at their campaigns and ask yourself what makes them work so well. Hopefully this section has given you a proper good primer on what good brands are and what they can be right with their strategy. A good brand is about much more than just a logo. It's about seeing your company as a movement rather than a service and creating something that people can get excited about. It all starts with the mission statement, so ask yourself, what is it that you'd want to do really well and what do you want to achieve? What does your business stand for and why do you do what you do? Once you know that, your company will have the core of its identity, and from there, it's a matter of communicating that identity in everything that you do. That means creating beautiful products, having a strong logo, and a company name, expressing yourself through social media channels, and other digital marketing strategies. If you keep doing this well, then you won't just have customers anymore, you'll have true fans. And they say that 5,000 true fans for your business, you can make a living. So suddenly the possibilities will be even greater than before where your company can go and what it can achieve.